about two years ago, two or three years ago, I saw a poster that was presented at a meeting that was a preliminary to a paper that ended up in the Journal of Urology. And it convinced me that I should rethink microwave therapy. It was a poster that had five-year data on cooled thermal therapy. And that right away was interesting to me. At five years, the patients were not taking any medications, had not had salvage therapy, and that was something that was important to me. The way I looked at it is I could offer a procedure right here in the office that was easy to do that had a 70% success rate at, at, at five years. And for me, that was a home run, that I could offer a patient something that could be done here in the office. They could walk out the door, not have to be kept overnight, and could be successfully treated. I think from a cost standpoint, long term, successful cooled thermal therapy is also less expensive than medical therapy. So I'm so far a little shocked how many patients would actually go for cooled thermal therapy in the office instead of medical therapy, but we're treating a lot of patients under that exact scenario. Cooled thermotherapy is a safe, effective, in-office treatment that provides long-term relief from BPH symptoms and urinary obstruction. Proper patient selection is a critical first step in successfully applying the treatment. Cooled thermotherapy is appropriate for men experiencing moderate to severe BPH symptoms, especially patients who do not want to take daily medications for the rest of their lives. The physician should discuss treatment options with the patient. If the patient expresses interest in cooled thermotherapy, a thorough patient evaluation is needed to make the final treatment recommendation. It is critical that the patient be thoroughly educated on the procedure, including how to prepare, what will happen the day of the procedure, and setting realistic expectations for after the procedure has been completed. They see it as a way to get off a daily medication, and with the fact that we can treat the patients here in the office, with very little complication and with very, very good success, they can look at a five-year data like I can. I sit down with them and show them the data and say, at five years, you could be going uh, with no medications, no surgery, no complications. And that's really a very uh, attractive factor for patients. A typical pre-treatment assessment may include an International Prostate Symptom Score, also known as American Urological Association Symptom Score. In addition, the physician may also choose to calculate a quality of life score. The physician should do a thorough medical history, document all medications, and perform a physical exam on the patient, including a digital rectal exam. Additional tests may include a urinalysis, urine culture, and a blood analysis, specifically a serum PSA, BUN, creatinine, and glucose. The physician may want to consider INR if the patient is anticoagulated. A bladder ultrasound should also be performed to test for post-void residual. Certain patients will have a urodynamic study with or without a urophlometry. In addition, a cystoscopy may be performed to rule out an enlarged obstructing median lobe protruding into the bladder and to measure prostatic urethral length. It is also important to evaluate the patient to identify conditions that can mimic lower urinary tract symptoms secondary to benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH, such as UTI, Parkinson's disease, bladder, or prostate cancer. Urologists must establish to their satisfaction that the prostate lengths are measured accurately from vera montanum to the bladder neck, that the patient has BPH, that the treatment is clinically indicated, that no active infection is present, and that the median lobe is not protruding in the bladder, which would be considered a ball valve median lobe. Any patient that comes in with uh, voiding symptoms, I always get an AUA symptom score. I'm always going to get a urinalysis and a culture. And if they haven't had a recent PSA, I check a PSA just to make sure I'm not missing underlying prostate cancer. After that, if I believe they're a good candidate for cooled thermal therapy, all of the candidates at that point are going to have a flexible cystoscopy. And the reason I do that is I just want to make sure there's no intravesical pathology like a bladder tumor or a bladder stone and I want to make sure they don't have a large middle lobe because that is going to be something that keeps them from having cooled thermal therapy. It is important to understand the contraindications for the procedure to determine the appropriate treatment choice for the patient. 
Cooled thermotherapy is a non-surgical procedure intended to relieve symptoms and obstruction associated with BPH and is intended for prostatic urethral lengths greater than or equal to 2.5 centimeters. Using cystoscopy, urologists must establish that the prostatic urethra is measured accurately from the vera montanum to the bladder neck. Cooled thermotherapy is also not indicated for patients with a urinary sphincter or any metallic or non-metallic implant which is within 1.5 inches or 38 millimeters of the prostatic urethra. It should also not be considered for patients with a urethral stricture which is unable to pass through a 22 French urethroscope, patients with peripheral arterial disease with intermittent claudication, or with Lurch's syndrome, for example, claudication of the buttocks or perineum. Cooled thermotherapy is not indicated for patients who have undergone pelvic radiation therapy or have implanted active devices, including pacemakers or defibrillators, within 2.6 inches or 6.5 centimeters of the prostatic urethra. It is also important to understand the key precautions to ensure the safety of the patient and the effectiveness of cooled thermotherapy. This treatment has not been established in patients with clinical or histological evidence of prostatic cancer or bladder cancer or patients with a post-void residual greater than 350 milliliters. It is also cautioned for patients with previous pelvic surgery or rectal surgery with the exception of a hemorrhoidectomy. The treatment has also not been established for patients with an obstructing median lobe enlarged out of proportion to the rest of the prostate and protruding significantly into the bladder, sometimes referred to as a ball valve median lobe. It is also cautioned for patients with active urinary tract infection, patients interested in preservation of future fertility, patients with gross hematuria not due to BPH, and patients with prior prostatic surgery, excluding balloon dilatation. Lastly, the procedure has not been established in patients with coexisting illness or specified obstructive symptoms found to be caused by any of these listed conditions. Neurologic bladder disorders, prostate volume greater than 100 cc's, bladder neck contracture, urinary sphincter abnormalities, bladder stones, evidence of bacterial prostatitis, renal impairment, coagulation disorders. Physicians should refer to the instructions for use for a complete list of indications, contraindications, and precautions. All of these considerations will help determine if the patient is an ideal candidate for cooled thermotherapy. The instructions for use are included in each procedure kit or can be accessed on the Urologics website at www.urologics.com. Once it has been determined that the patient is a good candidate for cooled thermotherapy, it is important to establish realistic treatment expectations. The patient needs to understand that while results are not immediate, most men can expect to feel relief in about 6 to 12 weeks. Urologics provides patient education tools that may be beneficial in helping educate patients about BPH and the cooled thermotherapy procedure including a DVD which can be viewed in the physician's office or sent home with the patient for independent review. Once the physician and patient have elected to proceed with the treatment, the patient should start on a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication prior to the procedure. The day prior to the treatment, the patient should avoid alcohol and caffeinated beverages and should eat lightly both the evening before and the morning of the procedure. Patients must have an enema at home one to two hours prior to the treatment. This helps ensure that the sensors maintain good contact so that the accurate rectal temperature readings are achieved throughout the procedure. It also enhances patient comfort. Patients are generally asked to arrive at the physician's office an hour prior to the scheduled treatment time. Following this process will help ensure the best possible outcomes for the patient. Physicians most commonly prescribe oral medications, including anti-anxiety medications such as Valium, preemptive analgesics, and anticholinergic or antispasmodic drugs. Typically, oral analgesic or anti-anxiety medications are given to the patients about an hour before the procedure. There is no one right way to manage comfort control. It's up to each practitioner. Some practitioners use a combination of oral and topical analgesic along with a prostatic block for comfort control. Types of prostatic blocks include a paraprostatic block, an expanded regional block, and a transurethral block. Many experienced physicians recommend utilizing a prostate block with the cooled thermotherapy procedure to minimize patient discomfort. 
Patient perception of unusual pain and or acute changes in pain is an important safety check. Therefore, it is important that the patient not be over sedated. I think that most uh, people will anesthetize around the urethra, between the prostate and the rectum, and uh, behind the, or between the seminal vesicle and the prostate. But I think that uh, for some reason we get a better block when we go up around by the bladder neck. So uh, if you look at the uh, pictures carefully, you'll see the uh, typical Mount Blanc or White Mountain a picture between the seminal vesicle and bladder. And we actually go above that, so it's between the prostate and the bladder and there. The physician introduces the needle and it will come through at Mount Blanc. The physician may inject a small amount of the lidocaine, then pull back and run it right underneath the prostate. The physician may then move to the urethra and again inject a small amount of lidocaine. The physician should now be able to see the Mount Blanc area and may insert the needle through the top of this area and inject the majority of the lidocaine into the patient. This procedure demonstrates one possible prostate block. There are several different types of blocks which can be utilized, including a periprostatic block, an expanded regional block, or a transurethral block. These procedures are recommended by experienced urologists, and selection of the appropriate pain management protocol should be based on the clinician's individual medical judgment. Cooled thermotherapy can be performed in the same room used for standard urology procedures it is important to set up the treatment room appropriately. The room should have adequate space for the cool wave control unit, treatment table, ultrasound unit, and working space for the staff. The urologics field representative can assist in proper room setup during initial training. Necessary components for the cooled thermotherapy procedure include the control unit, procedure kit, and patient comfort kit. The procedure kit includes three components, the microwave catheter, the rectal thermosensing unit, RTU, and the coolant bag. Please note that the 30-use RTU handle comes in a separate box. The patient comfort kit includes the microwave catheter holder, RTU holder, and knee cushions. A permanent marker or tape can be used to mark the catheter location at the tip of the penis. The procedure requires a transabdominal ultrasound to verify correct catheter placement. There are several microwave catheter size options, including standard, long, and short. In addition to standard urologic procedure supplies, the following material should be available for the treatment. A straight and Foley catheter, anesthetic lubricating jelly, such as Eurojet or lidocaine jelly, as well as a water-soluble lubricating gel, such as KY jelly. The clinician may also want to prepare a local bladder anesthetic. 200 cc's of sterile water for the coolant bag and microwave catheter balloons are needed. Be sure to use sterile water and not saline solution. A 60 cc catheter tip syringe, such as a Tumi, in addition to a 60 cc lure lock syringe, and two 10 cc lure lock syringes, as well as a catheter plug, urine drainage bag, permanent marker or tape, sterile and non-sterile gloves, urethral clamp, specimen cup, a urinal or graduate, and an ice pack are also required. Clinicians generally choose to set up the cool wave control unit and input patient data before the patient enters the room. Turn on the unit by pressing the switch located on the back side of the control unit. The unit will proceed with the startup routine. From the main menu, press the login button, enter the password, or press the create new user button. After login, press the treatment button on the main menu screen and advance to the screen to enter the patient and clinical data. There are three data fields required, age, urethral length in centimeters, and prostate volume in milliliters. In addition, enter the patient name, a patient identification number, and the facility or institution. The patient's quality of life score, prostate-specific antigen, international symptoms score, and post-void residual can also be input. Connect the microwave catheter and rectal unit to the patient connection cable housing and verify that the control unit correctly scanned the microwave catheter and RTU serial numbers in the appropriate fields. Scanning is complete by RFID technology and no use interaction is required beyond the normal connection of disposable components. Next, choose a standard or custom protocol depending on microwave catheter and the user's preference. If a customized protocol is preferred, adjust the urethra and coolant settings and then choose the ramp rate slow, medium, or fast. The selected protocol will be saved as an option for future treatments. 
The next step is to prepare the cool wave control unit for the treatment. Begin by filling the coolant bag with 100 cc of sterile water. As a reminder, do not use saline water. The water is chilled and circulated through the microwave catheter to protect and preserve the urethra from heat during the treatment. The bag is attached to the chill plate on the cool wave control unit with the three mounting pins. Route the inlet tubing through the pump mechanism. Align the coolant bag sensor module with the locating pins to the right of the pump mechanism, ensuring that the inlet tubing is seated in the notch of the pump housing clamp. Insert the tubing into the holder near the on-off switch to prevent the tubing from being pinched by the coolant door. Close the coolant door. Next, prepare the RTU Plus. The RTU Plus provides real-time, automatic feedback of the rectal temperatures to assure patient safety during the treatment. To assemble the RTU Plus with a disposable balloon, open the package for the RTU Plus reusable handle or obtain a disinfected RTU Plus handle from a previous treatment. The RTU handle with the temperature sensors should not be used for more than 30 treatments. Open the package for an RTU Plus disposable balloon. Insert the temperature sensor strip into the sensor channel of the disposable balloon and do not bend the temperature strip significantly. The temperature sensor strip should extend to the distal end of the channel and the temperature sensor channel should be aligned with the top side of the handle. Seat the balloon inflation tubing in the inflation tubing channel located in the base of the rectal unit handle. The locating key should snap into place within the handle keyhole. If not, reorient or reassemble the device. The proper positioning of the temperature sensor strip in the disposable balloon is assured by the locating key and handle interaction. Then slide the protective sheath down from the balloon and pull it over the handle. The next step is to begin inflating the balloon using a 60cc lure lock syringe and ensure that the temperature sensors are midline. Deflate the balloon completely and prevent any air from re-entering the RTU Plus. The control unit, coolant bag, and RTU Plus are now prepared and the patient is ready to be brought into the treatment room. The remaining setup can be completed just prior to beginning therapy. Before bringing the patient into the treatment room, it is important to check their vital signs and verify that they have performed the enema. They should also be given their pre-treatment medications. Now is a good time to reiterate to the patient approximately how long the procedure will take, what will happen during the procedure, and the level of discomfort that is considered normal. For example, it is quite common for patients to feel warmth or a burning sensation at the meatus, along with a sense of urgency during the treatment. The patient can be brought into the treatment room about 30 minutes before starting the treatment. The patient is provided a gown or drape and asked to disrobe from the waist down. The patient is positioned supine on the treatment bed with his head slightly elevated to no more than 20 degrees. Local bladder and urethral anesthesia can be given 20 to 30 minutes prior to the treatment. The exact sequence may vary, but this is one method. First, instill lidocaine jelly into the urethra. Then drain the patient's bladder using a straight catheter. The local bladder anesthesia is then instilled using a 60 cc catheter tip syringe. Next, remove the catheter. Clamp the tip of the penis and wait 20 to 30 minutes to allow the medication to take full effect. Urologix offers several microwave catheters. This procedure demonstrates the CTC Advanced Microwave Catheter. Test the microwave catheter location balloon by filling it with 10 cc of sterile water. Carefully examine the balloon checking for any leaks. Deflate the balloon. Insert the microwave catheter with the coude tip pointing up and the urine drainage port posterior. The final positioning should place the coolant tubing in the anterior orientation. Inflate the location balloon with 10 cc of sterile water. Flush the catheter urine drainage port with 4 cc of sterile water and attach the urinary leg bag. Using either abdominal or rectal ultrasound, ensure the location balloon is properly positioned. With the microwave catheter in position, insert the RTU Plus. First, lubricate the balloon with water-soluble jelly. Fold the balloon, grasp it in the middle, and orient the temperature sensors so they are facing toward the prostate. Insert the RTU Plus into the rectum and inflate the balloon by instilling 90 cc of air. 
then reduce to a minimum of 70 cc's for patient comfort. Remove the syringe. With the RTU Plus in place, reposition the patient on his back. To be in a proper orientation, the RTU Plus handle should lay flat on its base when the patient is in the supine position. The word anterior should be visible on the handle. Mark the catheter with a permanent marker or tape at the tip of the penis to monitor any catheter movement during the treatment. Make all connections between the microwave catheter, RTU Plus, coolant tubing, and the control unit. With all of the connections verified and the microwave catheter and RTU Plus properly positioned, the clinician can customize the treatment settings. Treatment time with the CTC Advanced Catheter is 28 and a half minutes. The treatment checklist screen displays the list of items that must be verified before proceeding to the calibration screen. The fully automated calibration process begins and will display the completion status of each item. This process assures all components are connected and functioning properly. After completing the process, the cool wave control unit will automatically enter the treatment mode. The advanced ramp rate setting determines how quickly the microwave catheter reaches the target temperature. The ramp rate setting preset is medium. The cruise software, using feedback from the urethral and rectal temperature sensors, automatically adjusts power output and coolant levels to customize the treatment to the patient's specific need. The system provides optimum treatment using the CRU software, although manual control is also available. It is recommended to create a soothing environment to comfort the patient, such as low lights, soft music, and conversation. In addition, placing an ice pack at the tip of the penis or abdominal area may provide additional comfort. Only those physicians who have been thoroughly trained on the operation of the Targus system, cool wave control unit, and cooled thermotherapy should deliver the cooled thermotherapy procedure. Attention by a qualified physician is required during the use of the Targus system. Either tape or permanent marker may be used to mark the catheter, although marker may be a better option as the KY jelly on the catheter may cause the tape to move. Monitor the patient during the entire treatment for pain. If the patient complains of any abnormal pain or a sudden increase in pain, immediately check the microwave catheter and RTU Plus placement. Any sudden changes in readings, especially temperature decreases, might indicate a sensor has moved from its proper position. In the advanced mode, the urethral temperature defaults to 40 degrees Celsius. For the standard protocol, the set point temperature can be lowered for those patients experiencing greater discomfort. In general, however, higher values result in higher intraprostatic temperatures. At any time during the treatment, if an error warning occurs, a single beep will be heard and an error message will appear on the system error screen, event pane, or detail pane. If the reset button is not grayed out, use the message on the event pane to correct the error. The clinician can also press the help button to learn more about the error message and the appropriate response. The Cool Wave user manual contains comprehensive information about error management and can assist in correcting many issues. In the event that expert consultation is needed, the Urologics Technical Support Department is available on a 24-hour basis at 1-888-229-0772. At the end of treatment, the system will enter the cool-down phase and will discontinue the microwave power, although the system will continue cooling for another five minutes. When cool-down is complete, the Cool Wave Control Unit timer will read 0 minutes, 0 seconds. Coolant will continue to circulate until the cool down phase is ended by pressing End Treatment. Disconnect, remove, and dispose of the microwave catheter, RTU Plus balloon, and the coolant bag in accordance with universal precautions for contamination. Print a treatment file for the patient's chart. To do this, press the Options button from the main menu screen. On the Options screen, you will have four options Printer, Data, password or system. Choose data to proceed to the data view print copy screen. To copy a treatment file, insert a USB flash drive into the USB port, then press the copy button to save this treatment file to the drive. When the treatment is complete, the physician must make a decision on catheterization. Some physicians choose to place a Foley catheter. The catheter is generally in place for 48 to 72 hours following the treatment, but occasionally may be needed for up to five days. Other physicians may prefer to conduct a voiding trial to determine if a catheter is necessary. In addition, physicians may instruct their patients on self-intermittent catheterization. 
Following treatment, the patient may experience several days of abdominal discomfort and irritative voiding symptoms. Unless they are contraindicated, it is suggested that the patient receive a short course of oral non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and an antibiotic, as well as six to eight weeks of alpha blockers. Prior to releasing the patient, it is important to explain what to expect for the first few days following the treatment. The post-procedure instruction should include the possibility the patient's symptoms may transiently worsen after the treatment and include what is considered normal and what requires medical intervention. Remind patients that they should begin to notice improvement within 6 to 12 weeks of the treatment. In general, the patient should be able to return to normal activities within a few days. The cooled thermotherapy procedure provides safe, effective, and durable relief from the symptoms of benign prostate hyperplasia. Patients have been proven to show significant symptom score and flow rate improvement sustained out to five years, and 91% of all patients remain free from surgical or other procedure retreatment. For more information about using cooled thermotherapy and the support available from Urologics, please view the Urologics support module.